Hi, my name is Uri Wallach and I lead the development of CPM at N2W Software. CPM or Cloud Protection Manager is a backup and recovery solution for servers running on the EC2 compute cloud of Amazon Web Services. In the previous video tutorial, we saw how to define backup policies and schedules to perform basic backup using CPM. We will now see how to perform an application consistent backup policy for a Linux server running MySQL. Let's look at my management console. As you can see, I have a server named, or an instance named Joomla. This is based on a Bitnami uh, image. It's a uh, a LAMP environment it has an Apache web server, MySQL database, and a Joomla content management uh, system, of course, running over PHP. Uh, this is a very uh, standard uh, configuration for web servers. We're just going to use it. If I look here, we can see the demo uh, uh, Australian Park site of uh, Joomla. It doesn't really matter for, for this demo. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, define a backup policy to backup the server. So I'm clicking on new policy. I'll call it web serve. And uh, web serve policy. And I'm clicking on apply. The next thing I want to do is to add the Joomla instance as a backup target of this policy. So I'm clicking on backup targets, add instances. And from the list of instances, I'm going to click on Joomla, add selected, close. And you can see we have Joomla in our uh, backup targets. I'm going to leave every other uh, configuration as default, which means that all the attached EBS uh, storage will be automatically backed up, every backup. Let's return to uh, policies. And uh, the only thing I need to do now is to uh, make sure it, uh, this policy will run backup scripts for uh, application consistency because by default it doesn't run them. I'm going to click on more options and uh, here I can see backup scripts are disabled by default. I'll change them to activated and I'm going to change scripts output to collect which means that CPM will collect all uh, all the output that will be output to the standard error or uh, STDERR by the scripts and we'll save them and we can view them later on for reference or for debugging purposes. I'm clicking on apply. The next thing I have to do is to make sure I have the scripts. So uh, basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to log in the CPM server with SSH. I'm going to use the key or the private key I used uh, when I created the instance in EC2. And I'm going to use a user called CPM user. This is the same user CPM uses to run the script. So this is the best user to define and debug the scripts. So I'm in the machine now and I can uh, go to slash CPM data slash scripts. I already pre-copied the scripts here. So I have the scripts uh, and I already made sure they're all executable. The scripts can be of any programming language as long as they uh, conform with the naming uh, convention and of course they have to be uh, executable by Linux. So uh, we have three scripts. Every script has a prefix and after that the policy name. So the first script is before web serve. Uh, this script actually locks and flushes the tables or actually brings the application into con uh, consistency or backup mode before the backup starts. After means that after backup starts, after all snapshots are started successfully, we can release all those locks. And complete occurs when the backup is completed, so all the uh, the snapshots are completed successfully, and then I can do uh, anything I want to do when uh, when I know the backup is complete. In this case, we'll truncate or purge the tr transaction logs of MySQL. Any logs that are older than the backup, we can purge them here because we know we have a successful backup. Another thing I have here, I have here my SSH key, which is the key, the private key of the Joomla server. It's okay and safe to use it here or to keep it here because this is a, an EBS volume that I own. It belongs to my account. To be attached or deleted or whatever, I, I'll have to have the credentials of my account. And the CPM server also is protected by my key. So it is as safe to put the key here or any SSH key here 
as it is to put them in any other EC2 instance uh, you own.